Hello brothers and sisters and welcome to this video called the midnight hour of Passover. Shalom to you on this Wednesday the 3rd of April 2019 and we are 16 days away from Passover. And I'm going to open this one up with uh, the doctrine of first mention of midnight in the Bible which is Exodus 11:4. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. So that's the doctrine of first mention. That's the first time midnight is mentioned in the Bible. And then the first time hour is mentioned in the Bible is in Daniel 3:6. And whoso, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. So these are the doctrine of first mentions of midnight and hour. And uh, interestingly, um, the word hour in the King James version of the Bible is not mentioned in any other book of the Old Testament except for the book of Daniel. Um, the word hour is mentioned in um, all over the New Testament, but in the Old Testament, uh, funnily enough, it's only mentioned in the book of Daniel. Hour is only mentioned in the book of Daniel. So, the final countdown to Passover. We are living, I believe, at the greatest time of prophetic fulfillment in history to be alive. Um, there's, there is no better time to be alive for prophecy fulfillment than right at this very time that we are alive. And what an amazing blessing it is to be alive right now um, and to be awake as well. Um, bar all the things that are going on in this world and the things which hurt us, uh, the things which grieve us, that grieve our spirits and which cause us pain, um, this is the greatest time to be alive in the history of mankind as far as prophecy fulfillment goes. 6,000 years of history is behind us, knowledge has increased, and the picture of God's program is clearer now than it has ever been. So we can see more clearly right now uh, what God's program is, how it's going to be fulfilled, and um, what his plan is in his word, we can see that with more clarity right now than, than any other time in the history of mankind. And that is an incredible blessing. The prophets, as Jesus said, um, the, you know, the, 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 uh, the, the prophets and the greatest of men alive um, desire to see these things. And uh, even angels desire to, to look into these things. And we who are awake and we who are um, aware of the times that we're living in, I believe we all know this. Um, we, we know that, that this is the greatest time to be alive, and, and that, is, that is the sweetness um, in the, uh, you know, in the, in with the, that goes along with the bitterness. So, so John was told to eat the scroll, and it was sweet to his mouth, and it was um, bitter to his belly and 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 we know exactly what that that feels like because it's bittersweet um so i just want to focus on on the sweet right now because i know that it's very easy to um to focus on on the things that are that are bitter uh, in this world and um and just acknowledge just how blessed we are and just give glory to god and and thanks and uh and to to have shalom and to know that Yeshua is in control, God is in control, and everything is going according to the plan. The Jews are imminently expecting the Messiah, and so are we. So um, the Jews are saying he's coming. The Jews are saying that, that the Messiah is about to arrive, and the watchmen and the, the Christians are saying we know. So therefore, the only logical conclusion is that they are the same person. Um, the, Jews should, uh, the Jews should be able to see that the Christians are well aware that, that uh, Yeshua is just about 
to return and 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 come to the conclusion come to the same conclusion right like we are saying absolutely we know and and it's not the jews that are telling us we we are telling the jews that yeshua is about to return so independently we are saying the same thing as the jews are the messiah is coming and the christians are saying we're aware of that we know and uh and the messiah is coming <laughs> jesus christ is about is about to is about to return for the church so um and that should that should really concern the jews that should really concern them because we are saying the same thing so so the only logical conclusion for that could be that that is that they are the same person and the jews blindness is about to be removed by the hopazzo uh not just the jews blindness but uh the all of the yeshua's flock who will there are many of yeshua's flock who are currently today muslims who are Buddhists, who are, um, who, who are Hindus, uh, who are atheists, who are Jehovah's Witness, who are Roman Catholics, who are Mormons, and, and all, you know, every other false religion in the world, the, their blindness is, is going to be removed by the rapture of the church. So, so they will know that where, that, where they went wrong, okay? It's, it's, it's the wrong standing of the, the 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 person in in the lie right that they are in today that when the rapture of the church happens their blindness their blindness is going to be removed so it's not just the jews blindness that's going to be removed because if it's the jews blindness being removed you can be sure that it's the other nations or the or the other lies their blindness is going to be removed as well by the rapture of the church so the rapture of the church is a key uh, a key event, which which it's 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 Jesus' final miracle, removing the blindness of the people. Okay, and and in one and in one fell swoop. And of course, a lot of people are going to be deceived by the Antichrist, and they're going to be, you know, they are going to take the mark, and they're going to believe the lie. But I'm talking about Yeshua's flock here. And Israel will never be 70 years of age again since it has returned and um, after the diaspora of 2000 years uh, the longest period of of time any uh, people have been in um in um in the diaspora or, or in um, exile from their land and god god maintained them for 2000 years 10 times longer than any other uh, nation or diaspora of people who were away from their land and they they have returned and they will never be 70 years they will never be 70 years of age again of course we know 70 in the bible and three score and ten are uh it, it's a key number it's an it's a prophetically profound number and there will never be another 70th passover of israel since the jews have returned to their land this is it this is the 70th passover of israel um since the reestablishment of Israel and and since the Jews have have returned to their land and and the name Israel has come back to this world, uh, and and this is it. So th there isn't another one. This is the seventieth Passover of Israel. Okay, so moving moving on to the um, on to the information in this slide, uh, Holy Spirit wordplay. So there are four words. Um, which in the Hebrew are um, they are they are singular, so they are singular nouns, but they are in plural form, and and these are these are very these are very rare, um, and these are the ones. If anybody knows uh, other ones which are the singular in in the plural form, please let me know. But but these are the ones uh, from the Bible that 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 I know, and you'll obviously also know. So obviously the the first one is Elohim. And uh, the this this uh, these two last characters on the word here is the yud, and that's the final mem. So that's im, and that's uh, what makes it uh, that's what makes it plural. So Elohim, obviously, uh, we know that um, the uh, the Godhead is Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and so there is a there is there is Holy Spirit wordplay that's going on here in that word so elohim is 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 in is in the plural form the second word is mayim um which is 
mem, uh, yud, and final mem, and that is that is water. And obviously, we know that there are two. The Holy Spirit is is described as water all throughout the Bible. So so there's this there's this dual um, or plural nature of water, which is going on. Obviously, water as it is as we drink, which is the the uh, the the, sus the sustenance of life, and uh, we die very quickly if we don't have water. And then there is um, there's the Holy Spirit as well, which is uh, which is described as water. Then there's Shemayim, which is heaven, um, and there's the heavens above, which we can see obviously, and there is the heaven, the third heaven, which we can't see, where where uh, which is the which is where God resides the throne of the throne of God and, and also obviously there's the um, the the heaven where uh, uh, powers principalities rulers of darkness and wickedness in high places so so there are there are multiple heavens and but but that word heaven is in the singular so um, the the other word is Mitzrayim which is Egypt so Egypt is described uh, the word Egypt is, is singular, but it is in the plural form. Mitzrayim is in the plural form. So, the Holy Spirit word plan, and what it implies here is that there are two Egypts. And, and of course, um, anybody uh, who's, who's studied the Bible will, will understand that, that, uh, that, that Egypt, that the world is a type of Egypt. And uh, Egypt is, uh, the, is, is a model of the world and the sin and the bondage of Egypt and, and all those kinds of things. So what I'm, what I'm, um, what I'm looking at as far as the, the Egypt and Mitzrayim is that there needs to be another exit. There's going to be two exits from Egypt. There are two Egypts. We've had one exit and there's going to be another exit coming. So there are two Egypts and there are going to be two exits and of course... I'm inferring that that is the Hopatso. So the Godhead is Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and water, um, and, and the Godhead is, is Elohim. Um, water is needed for life, as the Holy Spirit is needed for eternal life, and that's Mayim. The visible heavens above and the heavens unseen, that's the third heaven or the abode of God, is Shemayim. And Egypt as a nation and Egypt as a type and model of the world is Mitzrayim. So, the exit of the second type of Egypt, the Egypt as the world, is the Hopatso. So, uh, the, the Holy Spirit has, has, uh, has put something in those, uh, in those uh, singular nouns as a plural form to, to hint to us that there's a second is a second type, if you will, of of that particular word, and and obviously Egypt is the one that I'm that I'm uh, focused on. Okay, midnight in the Bible, uh, the first met doctor first mentioned, and it came to pass that midnight, uh, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. And all the firstborn of the cattle. So, um, as you'll probably know, I have said that I believe that we will know the very hour of the rapture of the church based on uh, Revelation three three, and uh, the the only night um, in the Bible that uh, that that the Bible warns us to to be aware of and to watch is the night of Passover, and of course. The midnight hour is when all um, hell broke loose in Egypt for everybody who didn't have the blood on the doorposts. So the firstborn of Egypt, in terms of the Hopatso uh, being the, the firstborn and the likeness to Egypt and the likeness of the Hopatso to uh, the firstborn of Egypt dying is, is um, one of the things we should remember <clears throat> Is that the people who are raptured from this world are born into heaven, and they are they are the firstborn, right, of the world who are who are born into heaven, and those who are raptured from this world are as good as dead. <clears throat> the people who are who who go in the rapture, the people who 
go in the Harpazzo are exactly good as dead to this world. So that is a that is a, a, a literal death, if you will, of, of everybody who who is raptured. They're no longer here. So so um, keep in mind that idea that that it's you know the the, the, the the person who is raptured is dead to this world. So and we should be we should of course that's the that's the the spiritually um, there's the spiritual fulfillment of being we are dead to this world in Christ, but uh, there's the literal fulfillment as well. At the rapture of the church, we will be physically dead to this world because we're no longer here. And in Judges 6, uh, 16, 3, uh, Samson lay till midnight uh, and he was actually with a harlot there. He was lying with a harlot and, uh, and he, he, he rose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, and put them up, up upon his shoulders and carried them up to the top of, of a hill that is before Hebron. So here's Samson laying with a harlot, and they tried to they tried to trap him um, and to uh, to ambush him. And he, of course, Samson was so powerful and strong that he took away the whole door and the gate and the bar and 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 carried them off um, and carried them off for a very long way. So nothing could nothing could stop Samson, um, and that was at the mid, at the midnight hour that that occurred. And then uh, in Ruth three eight it says it came to pass at midnight that the man that's Boaz was afraid and turned himself and behold a woman lay at his feet and that's when uh, she asks asked him to uh, to cover her and uh, she he is her uh, her kinsman redeemer and that occurred at midnight. And then in 1 Kings 3.20, it says, And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me, while thine handmaid slept, and laid it in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. So here we, here we see there's, uh, there's talking about the, um, a, 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 child, a dead child. This is, this is when they come and they appeal to uh, Solomon. And uh, the... The woman exchanges her dead child with with a live child, and this is when Solomon talks about cutting the baby in half, which is which is uh, which is possibly an allusion to the cutting, the dividing of the land of Israel. And of course, um, the the woman whose baby it really is uh, says that she doesn't want she doesn't want to do that, and Solomon then knows that 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 um, that she is the true mother of the child, and that's that that occurred at midnight so there's this there's this exchanging of a you know of a dead child with a live child and and this woman a, a, appealing to to solomon this israelite woman appealing to to solomon um to to rectify this situation and that of course occurred at midnight so there there are there the the midnight hour is a is a recurring theme in the Bible, and it's it's the most popular recurring theme as well. It's obviously the midnight hour is, you know, everyone says in this world they talk about the midnight hour, right? That comes from the Bible. And then in Job um, thirty four uh, twenty, um, this is when this is eventually after Job's uh, three friends Eliphaz, Bildad, and and Zophar. They're not really very good friends because they're trying to find fault with Job um, and uh, trying to find reason and cause for his calamities. And the things that they say are also quite fair. That you know, that it's not like they're wrong, but the fact is that that God is God is sovereign and He decides um, why and the reasons for Job's suffering. So eventually, Elihu, who's this who's this youngster, um, he pitches up and he's he. He has the right. Po- he has the right point of view, and he sets Job's friends straight before before God intervenes and actually um, rewards Job, and his friends are, are, are given the truth. So Elihu says in Job thirty four twenty, in a moment they shall die, and the people shall be troubled at midnight, and pass away, and the mighty shall be taken away without hand. So that's. That's a very interesting prophecy there, 
Um, if you read that chapter, you'll see that um, that one kind of sticks out there, and um, it's uh, yeah, you know, it's talking about the midnight, uh, the midnight hour that uh, that this calamity occurs. Okay, then in Psalms one one nine sixty two, at midnight, I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy right, righteous judgments. So this is in the acrostic poem of Psalms one one nine, where they all begin with the um, with the letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and that is um, that's under the chet, uh, which is the eighth letter. Of the Hebrew alpha, alphabet, that's David, saying that he 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 arises at midnight to give thanks uh, because of his because of God's righteous judgment. And then in Matthew twenty five verses six, this is the one that uh, I want to tell you is is uh, not for the Christians, but for the for the Jews. Apparently, I disagree. So Matthew twenty five verses six says. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And in Mark 13.35 it says, Watch ye therefore, this is Jesus saying, For ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. And you'll notice that midnight is the only definite article there. Um, midnight is the only specific, um, precise point in time, and uh, and all the other ones are are not. So um, this may be a um, this may be a global time zone um, address. So it's going to be midnight in Israel, but it's going to be evening in another part of the world, and. Uh, the cock crying in another part of the world uh, or in the morning but at midnight is the only definite article there it's only the it's the only specific points in time it's 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 explicit um, so I think that that's the one to pay attention to in Acts 1625 I really like this one uh, this is when Paul and Silas are in prison and at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Hallelujah, that's what's going to happen in this world. And immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And that was at midnight. And in Acts 20, verses 7, uh, this, was, uh, this is when Paul was preaching. It says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber, the upper chamber, where they were gathered together. The Episynagogue, the great gathering, the religious assembly of the church. Praise the Lord. And Paul continued his speech until midnight. So... The gospel, Paul preaching the gospel, Paul preaching the word, the words of Paul, uh, the word of God is still being spoken perhaps up until midnight of Passover, the eve of Passover. Please, Lord, let it be so. Rapture this church. Okay, and then Acts 27, 27, um, about midnight. The shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and this was when they were just about to be shipwrecked, and they all thought they were going to die, and uh, they were shipwrecked on Malta, and that was at midnight that that they deemed that uh, that they were drawing near to to some country, and and of course all of them survived uh, that storm and the sinking of that boat, and uh, it was at midnight that they came to a new country. Okay, then the hour. In John 5, 25, it, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. 
And in John 5, 28, it says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. And of course, that is the resurrection. And in John 13, 1, it says, Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come and that he should depart out of this world, Right. So when was that when when was that going to be? When was that going to happen? When when was Jesus going to be uh, when his, he said, my hour has not come yet. My hour has not. And then when the when the when the Greeks came to the disciples and said we would see Jesus, he said, now my hour is come. And um, that the son of man be glorified. So he says here that, that before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. So here we see uh, there's, there's the mention of Passover and hour in the same verse. And then the one that, uh, that's, that keeps me looking for the very hour of his return um, is Revelation 3 3 remember therefore how thou hast hast received and heard and hold fast and repent if therefore thou shalt not watch I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee and of course a lot of people translate that as to like the season and all that kind of thing but I translate it literally and I take it as literal that uh, that I believe that we will know the very hour the the, the, the people who are watching um, and who are desperate for his return and looking at the signs. The signs are key to understanding the times, right? So the signs are key to understanding the times. And, uh, and um, Jesus says that, uh, the, the, that those who are looking for him when he returns, it's, those one, it's the ones who are looking f look, actually looking for him as he returns, not the ones who know the, you know, who, who, who know, the time, the, 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 the seasons, but the ones who are actually looking for him at that very moment. That's how, that's how I, I read that, you know, that the, that the master returns and the, 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 the servants are actually watching, watching for his return, um, his, his, the, the very moment of his return. And, and I certainly don't want to miss that, if that be so. Okay, guys, so let's do some astronomy stuff. Here we can see this is Virgo, uh, and this is on the eve of Passover. This is at 11.59.59, and uh, here you can see uh, there is a uh, full moon which has just exited the legs area of Virgo, and that will be at midnight of Passover, and uh, my location is set to Israel so that will be from the perspective of Israel and uh, it's interesting that um, that the full moon has just come out of the legs region of Virgo so if this is the um, if this is the 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 full moon that turns to blood uh, that would be quite a fitting picture because obviously childbirth and and blood and that kind of thing so so that is that's Virgo, uh, and the the moon is not always there um, or around this region. Obviously, uh, during the Passover, um, you'll find that the moon is sometimes up at the head region of uh, of Virgo, or it'll be just sort of in the area of uh, Leo, um, or you know, it, it's not always it's not always in this this area. So um, it is it is an interesting place for the moon to be right at uh, at the um, at the legs of Virgo. Okay, then uh, Jupiter and Saturn haven't moved very much. Uh, Jupiter is the, the king planet, Saturn is the planet of Satan. Jupiter is at the foot of, of Ophiuchus, and that is obviously the serpent handler. Uh, Ophiuchus is, uh, is fighting the serpent, so um, that is obviously the, the representation of uh, good fighting evil. And um, the, the the Jupiter is right at, at the foot. So the, these haven't moved very much at all. These have stayed, but they will they will be moving because they're sort of uh, they're sort of in 
in uh, in retrograde motion as far as the earth is concerned um and that they're going to be they're going to start moving pretty soon um fairly quickly so if i just go forward let's go to april next year uh so we'll go forward uh by uh 12 months and you'll see that they're gonna they're gonna start moving see they're in retrograde motion going backwards but then they really start get getting going around um around the end of this year january next year february march and april so so they're really jupiter and saturn are really going to start moving um quite soon and uh and you know the god's telling his story in the heavens so here's saturn obviously saturn is in sagittarius sagittarius is the beast this is the depiction of a beast with a bow a bow and a crown was given to him that is the 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 white horse rider in at the at the beginning of uh revelation chapter six that's the antichrist and saturn is the planet of satan um which uh which relies on its rings for its light so saturn would be would be 40 percent darker if it didn't have its rings so it, it's it's a false sense of light if you will it doesn't have its own light the the lights uh, that the the light of saturn comes from primarily from its uh its its rings so it masquerades as an angel of light okay so they haven't moved very much but they are going to be moving a lot um over the the course of the next few months then here we have uh we can still see this uh, blue planet here is uh is um neptune and neptune used to be the pagan god of water and of course uh, these pagan names that were given to these planets, God uses them. You know, He uses all things to His purpose. So Neptune, the the the, the planet, uh, the water god, if you will, that's the planet that's right there by the water bearer. And of course, the water bearer is the is the Holy Spirit. And um, and uh, so Neptune couldn't be in a better place. Then we see uh, we see Venus and Mercury. So Venus is the white the white star and mercury is the gray one and those enter into um those enter into pisces right before passover so mercury is the is the is the messenger planet and we see it very close to venus and those enter in uh, venus enters into pisces uh, on the 18th so one day before passover and pisces is the dug uh, the word for fish in in uh, in hebrew is dug and uh, uh, um, the Pisces is this, the fish is the, is, the, is the emblem of Israel. Okay, so Pisces and Virgo the, are, are, are the constellations which are the representation of Israel. And they are, they are on opposite sides of the, of the uh, ecliptic. So um, you can see that venus enters in right before passover with with mercury so that's very interesting as well that's that's israel okay then we can see on passover look how perfect uh look how perfect the sun is placed right in the area of the hoof and the band of the fish that is going vertical okay this it has always been depicted like this the ram is the uh, is the is the pierced uh, the suffering uh, servant, the ram, is the uh, is the sacrifice, and uh, and it has been wounded. Okay, and and it has its hoof, its left hoof, in the left hand band of the uh, of the fish, which is going vertical. So E. W. Ballinger says that's the that is the that is the heavenly calling, and the one going horizontal or backwards along the ecliptic is the earthly calling and of course that is that is israel okay that's so so that is where venus and mercury are interestingly and right on this day is where the sun will be rising right at the hoof area which which is holding on to the band of the fish so it's like the messiah he's you know he's in control he's in He's in the midst of us, okay, and he is in control, and he is he is holding us, and that is exactly where the sun is. And then here you can see uh, this little um, blue dot here. That's Uranus, and Uranus, the pagan name that was uh, uh, 
given to the planet Uranus is the God of Heaven. So that couldn't be better placed either. Look, look where Uranus is right there. And on this very day, this is where the sun is going to be rising right in this area. And also you'll notice that the sun at the moment is, is almost out of Aries on Passover. So now we know that we are coming to the end of this age because the procession of the equinox means that when when um, when Jesus was uh, crucified on on Passover, the sun would have been around the middle section, okay, of the of the constellation Aries. So it would have been here, and over two thousand years, gradually every year uh, it it moves a fraction of a degree. So it moves a fraction of a degree eastward along the ecliptic. So uh, of, after two thousand years, you can see it's moved all the way along here. So so throughout the last 2,000 years, the, the sun would have moved slightly to the right or to the, to the eastward direction. And here you can see now Passover is right at the end. Okay, It's right at the end, right at this area where, where the hoof of Aries is. God has this all planned, guys. It's all, it's all been perfectly planned, how it's been depicted and everything. And of course, you can see that now... The, the, the sun is going to be moving out of the constellation of Aries at Passover. So here, this is, this is a clear indication that we are at the end of this age. Jesus Christ is right at the doorstep. This is, this is a visible picture that, it, that it's just about to happen right now. And of course, look where it is, right on the, right on the hoof of the ram and the band of the fish, which the so the ram is holding on to the band of the fish, right? That's Messiah. He's gonna he's gonna snatch us out of here. He's gonna get us. He's gonna get us out of here. We are that fish going upwards. Praise the Lord. Okay, and then also on the same uh, day, you can see that right at this moment, you can see that um, that uh, let's just go forwards to midnight on the, the let's just go forward to midnight. So here you can see right at this at this moment I'll go I'll go I'll zoom out slightly and if you watch on the over here you can see this is um, this is Venus and Mercury and then this is the Sun okay which is which is moving into that area we just spoke about and then this is uh, this is Mars moving which is the planet of war the planet of blood moving onto the right hand um, horn of the bull okay so Taurus so that is judgment right so I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go back to the 15th or let's say the 13th and I'm gonna go forwards again 14 15 16 17 18 19 okay let's go back one two three four five and you can see those three those three areas these three things here Venus and Mercury moving into Pisces the Sun moving into place Right over the uh, the hoof and the band of the fish, and the uh, and and um, Mars moving onto the right hand horn of uh, of Taurus. Okay, so those things are happening right on the nineteenth of April. There's three things happening in the heaven. Plus, we have the full moon uh, right at the feet of uh, of Virgo, and um, and that's that's pretty. That's pretty cool as well. So, guys, um, I think you'll agree that we have an in, a very interesting map of uh, of things in the heavens and where the celestial bodies are located. And uh, hopefully, this will be it. I'm looking forward to uh, Passover and um, and seeing if uh, if our if our King comes. And if he doesn't, we'll move on to the next one and we'll keep watching. But uh, we'll we'll definitely be watching on this day. I love you. Uh, keep reading the word. Be encouraged. Um, our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. There's no doubt about it. Nothing can stop. Nothing can stop God. Nothing can stop what's about to happen. No, no, no doubt. Uh, no skepticism. No mockery. No ridicule. Uh, no unbelief can stop what is about to happen. The rapture of the church is coming, and uh, and and and. And uh, and the king is coming to get us. Hallelujah! Woo!